In the late hours of the 27th of February 2020, the Turkish government opened its borders with Greece in an attempt to exert political pressure on the EU over Syria. Thousands of migrants and refugees were funneled to a single point on the land border between the two countries, with a promise of an open route to Europe. The Greek government responded by deploying extensive police and army forces along its already militarized border. It warned migrants not to cross and suspended its asylum system. After several days of tension, on the 4th of March, violence escalated at the castanez bazarkiller border crossing. Reports emerged of shootings and casualties. Turkish authorities stated that the Greeks used live rounds and wounded five asylum seekers. The Greek authorities denounced these claims as fake news. There is still no commonly accepted account of what happened that day. Forensic architecture Bellingcat and Lighthouse reports sourced and examined hundreds of videos and images from the 4th of March. In a joint investigation with Der Spiegel, we reconstructed the events of the day, spoke with eyewitnesses and gathered documents. We established that on the 4th of March, live rounds were fired along the stretch of the border, several people did sustain injuries, and one person was killed. The northern border between the two states is largely defined by the Evros Marriage River. Only in this area, the Karaj Triangle, the border runs over land and is marked by an 11 kilometer long fence, cutting across agricultural land and stretching from the river to the official crossing point between Greece and Turkey. The last 500 meters of the land border are forested and were only fortified with barbed wire in early March. By the morning of the 4th of March, Several thousand people had gathered near the crossing point and along the Turkish side of the fence. Turkish police and border guards were stationed around the border post. On the Greek side, soldiers and police officers formed a line about 80 meters away from the fence, moving forward towards the fence to intercept anyone who attempted to cross. Tear gas was used extensively by both Turkish and Greek forces. Multiple holes were cut in the border fence. We spoke to eyewitnesses who suggested that these efforts were coordinated by Turkish authorities. Different perspectives of the events were captured on video taken by migrants, local and international media, and government operatives. We have collected approximately 100 videos and selected 24 for closer analysis. Several of those videos were live streamed and therefore had a clear timestamp. Depending on which side of the border they were captured, these videos and photographs were often time-coded differently. Accounting for this time zone difference, we chronolocated the footage according to Turkish time. Specific events, such as bursts of gunfire, acted as temporal indicators that helped us synchronize the videos and create a continuous timeline of events. We sourced high-resolution satellite imagery from March 2020, which captures the state of the vegetation along the border fence. We determined the location of the videos and the relation between them by comparing visual markers and placing them within a 3D model. This news footage, shot from a drone, captures this dirt road in front of the fence and the Greek border crossing station beyond it. This video shows the Turkish border crossing station along with distinctive vegetation and landscape elements in the scene. Some of these features match those captured from the ground. By repeating this process with the remaining videos, we were able to reconstruct the scene and trace the trajectory of seven people who appear to have been wounded. We identified the seven wounded people based on their clothing, unique injuries, and the blankets they were carried in. We tracked each person from the area of the fence where they seemed to have been wounded to the Turkish border crossing where they were evacuated by ambulances. The first casualty we identified is here seen evacuated at 10.28 am. He appears to have received injuries to the face. At 10.33, another wounded person appears on four different videos with injuries to his torso. 
The third casualty is seen carried away from the fence at 10.39 with an injury to the ankle. He is delivered to the ambulance at 10.46 a.m. Three other people were hit at approximately the same time, around 10.43 a.m., with injuries to the thigh, head and leg. Two of these people have been identified as Mohammed Hantu from Syria and Jishan Omar from Pakistan. The final casualty appears to have been shot at 10.57. Most of the people seem to have been injured in close proximity to the holes made in the fence, suggesting that they may have been shot during concerted attempts to cross the border. This man, who was hit in the torso, would die of his wounds. According to this Facebook post, the victim's name was Mohammed Gulzar. Originally from Pakistan, he had previously lived in Athens. We gather documents that confirm Gulzar lived and worked in Greece until January 2020, when he voluntarily returned to Pakistan to get married. His widow, Sabah Khan, told us they were together at the border that day, hoping to enter Greece. Sabah Khan said that Gulzar spoke Greek and was trying to speak to the Greek soldiers across the fence before he was shot. ये बात करके तो बस ऐसे हम लोग मुड़े हैं पीछे की तरफ मैंने पीछे से फायर किया और गुलजार को कंबर पे पीछे लगा बैग के अंदर से बैग भी पहना हुआ था बैग के अंदर से फिर वो कोट के अंदर से फिर दिल को पकड़ के ना वहां पे गिर गए और लड़के आए ज्यादा सारे इकट्ठे हो गए जब गुलजार गिर गया तो बंदे आ गए और उन दूर दूर से उन्होंने फिर उठाया था वी सेट आउट टू रिकंस्ट्रक्ट हाउ ही केम टू बी एट द बॉर्डर ऑन द 4th ऑफ मार्च टू वेरीफाई हिज डेथ and to determine the conditions under which it occurred. Photographs and videos filmed by Sabah Khan and the friend who was trying to cross the border with them show Gulzar was near the border gate already on the 29th of February. Through these videos, we know what clothes he was wearing, distinctive black leather boots with a side zip, patched jeans and a black jacket. One of the videos of the evacuated casualties show a man with the same clothes. The clothes also match those which, according to Sabah, were removed from Gulzar after he was taken to the hospital. We geolocated the video by identifying this distinctive tree line on the horizon and by comparing the direction of the ploughed field in relation to the fence. This narrows down his location to one of these fields. We used other videos to create a panorama capturing the same tree line in relation to the Greek and Turkish border crossing stations. By mapping the horizon line to the background, we establish the location of the tree line. Therefore, the only area that this video of Gulzar could have been filmed in is here. In other videos, we can see in the distance a person being carried from the area where Gulzar was shot. <laughs> A closer look reveals the same clothes, black boots, blue jeans and a grey top. We can therefore approximate the time Gulzar was shot to around 10.30 am. At approximately 10.46 am, this video live stream shows a person claiming that a Pakistani man has been shot. We obtained photographs showing Gulzar being carried by medical personnel on a stretcher. His face, shorts and belt help us confirm his identity. We can also see a small entry wound which appears consistent with a bullet wound. According to hospital officials, Gulzar was admitted at 11 a.m. He was declared dead at 11.45 a.m. Documents from the morgue in Istanbul give the cause of death as injuries caused by a 5.56 mm bullet which was retrieved from Gulzar's body.
we set out to investigate whether live rounds were fired that morning, and if so, from which side of the border. These two videos, shot from opposite sides of the fence, at 10.57 a.m., 25 minutes after Gülzar was shot, capture the same bursts of gunfire. A burst of five shots, followed by six more, and then one, and one more. We asked an independent audio forensic expert, Stephen Beck, to analyze these audible bursts and determine whether what we hear is live ammunition. The audio forensic analysis determined that the recording registers the clear signature of live fire. According to the expert, when a supersonic bullet such as 5.56mm is fired, it produces two distinct sounds, the crack, caused by the shock wave from the bullet, followed by the bang of the muzzle blast. This signature is distinct from that of blank rounds, which produce only the sound of the muzzle blast, since there is no projectile. Time intervals between the different shots correspond with the rhythm typical of a semi-automatic firearm. The time gap between the two distinct sounds indicates that the shooter was within 40 to 60 meters from the camera. The person filming this video from the Turkish side says someone has been shot by Greek soldiers. At the same time, in this video, shot from the Greek side, we can hear someone who appears to be an official asking journalists to leave. <laughs> Off camera, two people speaking Greek seem to agree that the people who fired these shots aimed before shooting, intimating the Greek forces. Judging by their reaction, the migrants themselves appear to believe they were being shot at from the Greek side of the border. Here, they are seen running away from the fence, where we can also see what appears to be a group of Greek soldiers. We geolocated this group based on this watchtower in the background. They are approximately 50 meters away from the person filming, which is consistent with the distance calculated from the acoustic analysis of the shots. Indeed, after reviewing hours of footage from that morning, the only individuals observed carrying firearms capable of firing this kind of round close to the fence were on the Greek side. Having established that live ammunition was fired, we examined the available footage for personnel carrying rifles compatible with a 5.56mm bullet that was removed from Gülzar's body. Though such weapons are common to both Turkish and Greek militaries, we were unable to find Turkish personnel carrying such weapons near the fence on that day. On the other hand, several photos and videos capture Greek soldiers armed with rifles capable of firing 5.56mm bullets along the border fence shortly before, during and after the shootings. This photograph, taken on a dirt road leading to the border fence, was posted on Facebook later on the 4th of March. This unit belonging to the Greek Special Forces is holding M4 and M16 rifles. Some of the rifles carry magazines marked with red tape, while others carry regular magazines. This marking indicates that some rifles were loaded with blanks and some with live ammunition. Earlier that morning, shortly before the first person was wounded, these stills, taken from a live broadcast in Greek TV, show soldiers holding what appears to be a 5.56mm Minimi light machine gun. This photograph was taken at the same location at 10.42 am, 10 minutes after Gülzar was shot. The distinctive triangular foresight of the rifle indicates this Greek military personnel are carrying an M16 or M4 rifle, which fire 5.56mm bullets. Following features in the background, like this row of trees by the fence, these warehouses in the outskirts of Karaj, and the Selimiye Mosque in Edirne, we positioned these Greek soldiers within our 3D model.
They are standing approximately 200 meters away from the location where we first saw Gulzar being carried wounded. After analyzing hours of footage, talking to witnesses and consulting experts, we can determine that live rounds were fired on the 4th of March. At least seven people were wounded on the Turkish side of the border fence within 37 minutes of each other. The wounded and their helpers all retreated away from the Greek forces and towards ambulances near the Turkish border crossing point. One of these casualties, Mohamed Gülzar, died of his wounds. The bullet that Turkish authorities claim was removed from his body is consistent with the rifles carried by the Greek soldiers deployed along that stretch of the border at this time. Based on this evidence, it is highly probable that the shots were fired from the Greek side.